This is the Perching Hexacopter Drone for charging your drone battery on the fly. From oil pipeline inspection to studies of nature preserves, unmanned aerial vehicles, also called UAVs or drones, play a major part in data collection. In the agricultural industry, drones can automatically alert farmers of problems with crops in their fields. Even in security, a drone can deploy when an intruder is detected in a restricted area. Historically, the battery life of commercial drones has been an issue. Say it takes 10 minutes to fly where you need to go, you would have about 40 minutes of time to click the data before returning to your start location. If you have the very best battery available, that is, and before your battery would die. And with the improvements of cell networks, drones in the U.S. can communicate via the internet across great distances, meaning the only limitation to range would be theoretically the charge of the battery. In an effort to solve the battery life problem, another team of mechanical engineering students at the University of Utah created a drone that could be flown to a power line, grip it, and charge the battery off of it with the power of inductive charging. However, there were several shortcomings that needed to be resolved, namely the time it took to dock on a power line, the rate at which the drone collects power, and the weight of the onboard systems preventing other modules from being safely installed. Our goal is to take their proof of concept and vastly improve the ability of the drone to dock, the speed at which it charges the battery, and the weight of our subsystems to allow other data collecting modules to be added to the drone. Before we can describe by how much we have improved the drone's energy collecting capability, we have to understand how it collects this power. The typical power line in the U.S. has 700 amps of electricity flowing through it. When current moves through a wire or power line, it creates an electric magnetic field, or EMF for short. Using an inductive coil, we turn that electromagnetic field into usable electricity. Because the EMF from the power line gets exponentially weaker the further away from the line that you are, our coil is very close to the power line but it doesn't need to necessarily touch it. An inductive coil needs to be made from certain materials in a certain way, or it will not be able to generate a current. We used electric steel for the core because of its magnetic properties, and wrapped it in copper wire for its electrical conductivity. One of the key areas where we improved the last team's design is in the material. We could make a much smaller and therefore lighter core because ours was so much more efficient. If you close the magnetic flux loop around the power line, your energy harvesting efficiency also improves to a significant degree. In order to accomplish this, we made a secondary grip for the drone that would move the other core half into a position that completes the flux loop. At an average power line, the drone was previously collecting under half a watt power, enough to charge a drone in three days. But as a result of our improvements, it collects over 60 watts at that same power line current, which is enough to charge the drone in an hour. Power lines are usually high off the ground in a location that makes it difficult for pilots to acquire and approach them. Once the drone is there, it needs to be able to dock quickly before a stray gust of wind blows it away and it needs to be able to remain docked through high wind forces. The last model was able to accomplish docking with a pinion gear setup that relied on motor torque to keep the drone in place. In order for the motors to have the ability to hold the drone, the grippers were relatively slow to close at 2.5 seconds. Additionally, it relied on the skill and craft of the pilot to line up with the power line and keep it hovering under the power line for 2.5 seconds. Our model uses a similar approach with a few key differences. Our gripper system is designed to guide the power line into the bottom position, where a motor closes a sliding piece over the top of the power line. This way, the weight of the drone is supported by the structure itself, and we could free up the motor to close the gripper much faster taking only half a second. Once the main gripper has attached, a second smaller and lighter motor would move half of the coil to the top of the power line and begin charging. 
We also laid the groundwork for an onboard image processing system that would help the computer on the drone locate overhead power lines, and with the press of a button, it would align itself to the power line and dock automatically. Our designs were evaluated against our goals and rated on the simple scale shown here, with the objective of obtaining as high a score as possible for our design. We accomplished or surpassed all of our top design metrics except for our ambitious weight goal, simply because even with our refined coil design, it is made of a very heavy piece of metal. Our setup uses about half the drone's carry capacity, earning us a respectable score of 3 in that area. This is how we test our coils. Uh, this is a fixture we made. Uh, the way it works is we take power in from the wall, it comes through this wire here, this is wrapped 60 times, the 60 times wrap magnifies our magnetic power 60 times for the coil. Power output will be equal to voltage squared divided by resistance. Because this is an AC system, we have to use the root mean squared voltage instead of just regular voltage. Right now we're pulling around 11.8, 11.7 amps. If we do our math with our, our multiplier, that gives us 702 simulated power line amps. If we look, we have 58 volts uh, root mean squared with 272 peak to peak. When we calculate our power out of that, we have 84.1 watts coming out of the coil. We began building our drone off the previous team's work. In fact, we use their exact same drone base and weight calculations, and many of our ideas are variations or improvements based off of theirs. Our drone shows increasing promise for commercial use by having a powerful charging system and an easier docking capability. Our coil is more powerful, and our drone is much easier to use. There is still more that could be improved upon with our design from a more advanced docking software to a better battery charging circuit, and perhaps that will fall to another team. We are proud of the work we have done here and are very excited to see what applications it could be used for in the